Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of Test Dummy, a pop pop-size series where I try a trend for a week before diving into the science behind it. I'm your test dummy, Jess Bodie, and I'm joined again. I'm back. By Claire Maldarelli. Welcome. Very excited to be back on the show. Yes. So Claire is our health and fitness aficionado, mm -hmm. which is good because this week we're going to do a caffeine detox. I'm gonna cry. I'm literally crying. I'm really dreading it, but we're here and we're gonna do it. So we have our final cups of coffee. Oh, she is beauty. The foam, she is grace. The foam. <laughs> Cheers to the last cup, to better days, to less brain fog, to our future. Okay, I trust okay. you. Here, here. ASMR. Okay, so what even like is caffeine? Caffeine's a drug. Okay. Um, <laughs> for it's actually considered the most common psychoactive drug. Oh really? Um, because yeah. like, so many people drink it. Yeah. There's like these receptors in your brain that alert you that you're tired or you're drowsy. Right. And what caffeine does is it mimics the receptor there and it attaches to it such that it doesn't allow that signal to follow through. So like you're feeling not tired even though yeah. in actuality your in body is. Exactly, exactly. That's really yeah. weird. And then it also does all these different things like um, vasoconstricts and speeds mm. up your uh, heart rate and things like that. So why should we go this route? Like why mm. should we cut caffeine? Well, it is a drug and it's something that your body gets used to over time. What started out for both of us as one cup of mocha in college has turned into a six cup a day need. Love affair. Love affair. <laughs> Similar to alcohol, we get used to the amount of caffeine that we drink, so our bodies compensate and start sending more of those receptors out so that we can actually get drowsy. Eventually you're going to have an increased heart rate a lot, and if you're constantly having this intake of the stimulant, then it messes with your sleep patterns and things like that. So totally, I think all of these things combined are a good reason to drink caffeine in moderation and and um, that's definitely not six plus cups a day. Yeah, I mean, I was looking, I know that the FDA recommends 400 milligrams. Which I think is like, what, two to three cups? I was gonna cups? say two to three cups. Yeah. Yeah. So that's half of what we typically consume. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> we need to cut back. We need to cut back. Tell me about your first detox or your other detox. Was it yeah. debilitating? So it was bad. <laughs> it was very, very bad. Yeah. Um, the first 48 hours were the worst. Okay. That was a three week long process. It was yeah. like very, very like steady. And I still think I got headaches from it. So it's like, why not just quicken the process a totally. little bit? Like if I'm gonna get headaches- Rip I'm off the band-aid. Rip the band-aid off. So that's what I'm gonna do this time. Kind of. I'm gonna slowly <laughs> remove the band-aid. Whereas gonna last time it. I think I like soaked it in water. Yeah. And, like, you know, <laughs> so slowly rip it off. So what's the plan? Two weeks. I'm going cold turkey. I'm slowly decreasing so that, first because I've tried that before and I know it works, I know you're gonna feel miserable and I'm gonna feel less miserable. And so for all of you viewers to uh, experience both sides of caffeine detox and yeah. figure out what works best for you. I really am dreading tomorrow morning. It's gonna be bad. What am I even gonna do? It's gonna be bad. So we aren't the only ones interested in this. I found some celebs stopping their coffee consumption or going caffeine free because um, they think it improves their health. Tom Brady says he's never had a cup of coffee in his life. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Supermodel Naomi Campbell does not drink caffeine. She puts uh, a slice of lemon in a, a cup of hot water. Blake Lively. Blake Lively, um, wow. In okay. her Vogue 73 Questions interview. Mm. Do you ever watch those? Yes. The guy asked her, how do you take your coffee? And she goes, I like hot chocolate, so in the trash. And finally, Jennifer Lopez. No. She doesn't drink coffee. She says she doesn't drink caffeine because it wrecks your skin as you get older. Does it? I, I have no idea. This is true. extremely alarming to me. I love skincare. I love like having my routine right. and I work really hard at night. I don't want to counteract yes. all my hard work. Yes. So this is concerning to me. I hope JLo is wrong. The other thing I wanted to ask was 
I was reading a little bit that exercise can help, like, diminish mm. the symptoms. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, well, exercise gives off endorphins, and mm. so um, those make you feel good, and they're also pain relievers. And exercise also, on top of all those things, it um, increases your heart rate and gets your blood flowing, and so um, totally. that increase in heart rate sort of gets you, like, feel more awake and more energized. Well, cheers. Cheers to our last sip. So sad. Let the detoxing begin. I made it through the afternoon without my regular cup of coffee. And I really did think about it. Like I was like, now is the time where I would have it. Like I, I feel tired, but I didn't. I drank a LaCroix instead. Also, I have to put away all of my coffee paraphernalia because I think I'm going to be really tempted by it. Good night, sweet prince. Tomorrow morning is really just what I'm nervous about. Hello. I feel extraordinarily tired. I woke up extraordinarily early. I couldn't fall back asleep, but I did just get up eventually and I went to the gym um, to kind of, you know, Claire said those endorphins can help the Wow, I feel so brain dead, I can't even speak. Claire says those endorphins help lessen the effects of the caffeine withdrawal. So I'm hoping that I'm feeling slightly better than I would have if I had not gone, gone to the gym. I feel like I still feel bad. Caffeine withdrawal is not fun. The headaches are here now. Claire said the first 48 hours were the worst. And if that's true, then I only have like 12 hours left of that. I did walk by somebody today that had a coffee and feel really um, bitter. <laughs> but I'll just make that cup in how many days? 12 days? Oh, <laughs> that's so far away. My first cup in 12 days is gonna be really delicious is all I'm saying. Okay, day three is fine. I think the headaches are better. I just still feel fatigued. Seltzer is the, apparently the only thing that distracts me from this pain. <laughs> okay, I put in big earrings too, cause that makes me feel peppier. Day four? Is it day four? I've lost track. They're all blowing together. I should feel awake this morning, which is pretty wild. I don't, I'm sure I'll be really tired later, but as for right now, I feel decent. Hopefully it stays that way. Hello. What's up? <laughs> I'm at Eleanor's. We just shot a video. That's Tom. <laughs> the <laughs> producer. How's that no caffeine lifestyle going? It's terrible. Yeah. You also did a detox though. Yeah, it was really hard. It was so miserable. And you said that you had poor temperature control? Yes. Did you experience that? I feel like I am constantly like really cold in our office more than oh, usual. Although Tom saw me yesterday and he was like, you look like you have a fever. Was she bright red? Yeah. No, she was like sweating. She looked like super busted. <laughs> Today is better. It's still bad. Hey, good luck. Thanks. <laughs> it's Monday. It's day seven. It's definitely getting easier, but this weekend was really hard. I really just wanted to like lay in bed. If I didn't have something to do, there was no reason to get up, but I just really couldn't get up. It's day seven. And I must say, I feel a lot better. Honestly, the worst of my worries right now is that we're in a heat wave and I don't have air conditioning in this part of my apartment, but I don't feel dead inside. I am not totally out of brain fog yet because yesterday when I said, it's day seven, it's day seven, I feel great. It was day eight. It was fully day eight. Today is day nine. So I'm not out of the woods yet, I guess. It's amazing the change between last weekend and this weekend. Um, I. Woke up and got editing done and didn't even need coffee. Like, world of difference. I, I, I finally feel like I'm transcending. We're back. Woo! How are you feeling? It has been a long two weeks. Not feeling great, to yeah, be honest. I'm over the hump. I don't think you're over the hump. Yeah, what was your like trajectory of feelings over your cold turkey yeah. experience? And then I'll enlighten you with my amazing two weeks that I had. It was just like almost the equivalent of having like a week long flu. And the other thing was just the constant like brain fog, yeah. which I always thought I was like above, but I told, like I couldn't focus on more than one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. And 
if I was doing one thing, like, I couldn't remember what I was doing, like, five minutes ago. Right. Like, and it, did you feel like, like, it just took forever to, like, reach your thought? Yeah. 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 yeah, I just felt, like, slower than normal. Mm -hmm. How long did those, like, muscle aches and, like, flu-like symptoms last? I would say nine days. Um, nine days? Yeah. My method was to gradually decrease myself off okay. of coffee, so don't go completely cold turkey, but have half decaf, half caffeine for the first couple days, and less and less and less over the 10, 12 days. So I don't think I ever had like the flu-like body aches symptoms. I just kind of had this dull like headache and like dreary feeling. Like you know when you step outside and it's about to rain but it hasn't rained so it's just like like that, yeah. cloudy. Like there were just like clouds oh, over me. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. The brain fog too was just like, it was really challenging honestly. Also, I had a coffee dream I also had a coffee dream. I had like an actual, like kind of nightmarish coffee dream where you and uh, Tom, our video producer, uh, were <laughs> all just like trying to like find coffee. We couldn't find coffee. And I woke up and I was like, today is the day I'm gonna drink coffee. And then I knew I couldn't. And then it was just, it was a nightmare. That's devastating. Yeah. My dream was that I was like sitting like at this table um, and I was like doing work. It wasn't like we were filming or anything, but yeah. I had a big, hefty cup of iced coffee. <laughs> oh man, the um, dream. <laughs> literally. Definitely a dream. <laughs> I don't remember like chugging it, but all of a sudden I looked down and it was like half gone and I knew that I had chugged it and I just felt this immense guilt. Like I knew that I had violated my this challenge and this whole oh, effort. No. Then I woke up and I was like, oh, okay, it's fine. I still feel like but it's fine. <laughs> With that. With that, I, I've been dreaming about this for days. Cheers. Cheers. <sighs> My I feel, life. I hear the angels singing. Yeah. <laughs> the rainbow, the double rainbow <laughs> has come out. Oh goodness, I love coffee. For caffeine withdrawal headaches, we actually think we know what's going on scientifically. Mm -hmm. I spoke to um, Dr. Ken Wright, who is a neuroscientist at University of Colorado Boulder, and he explained it to me. When we drink coffee, like if you drink it every day, it constricts your blood vessels. Mm. So specifically in your brain, your brain gets less blood flow because your blood vessels are narrower. Okay. So then when you suddenly stop drinking coffee, those blood vessels open up and your brain gets like a rush of blood. And that's oh. where you get that like heavy, painful, headache from. And that's interesting because people um, with migraines, they've found have like more blood flow in their brains than people who don't or, oh, really? or aren't prone to migraines. So that makes sense that drinking coffee or just caffeine in general is sort of a migraine trigger because it's like affecting the blood flow. Yeah, yeah. totally. Mm -hmm. I've also read that caffeine can like help migraines. Right, and that makes sense too because if you have too much right. blood flow and then the caffeine is constricting it, then it's kind of like making it back to normal and yeah. stopping that pain. And as for all of those other symptoms like, you know, the tiredness, the sadness, the brain fog, the poor memory, um, we don't like totally know what's going on with, mm -hmm. with that, like why exact or what exactly happens in our brains mm -hmm. to make us feel that way. Scientists' hypothesis is that it has to do with the neurotransmitters, which is what, you know, when you were talking about earlier with those mm -hmm. tiredness receptors, we drink caffeine every day, mm -hmm. it goes in our brains, it makes us happy, it makes us alert and able to concentrate. But then when you suddenly take it away, your brain like it's confused because it expected it to be there. Mm -hmm. So it has to like recalibrate the way it's been functioning. And you know, for however long that takes, like if you're drinking a lot, like maybe it takes like a week or like it, for me, it was like nine days, but when it's recalibrating what's going on, we feel terrible. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, that's the proposed mechanism from scientists. Also, yeah. what about your skin? I heard, oh my God. yeah, I heard that there's like a, a true mechanism for like how caffeine coffee affects your skin. Right, I spoke with, um, Dr. Megan Feely, who is a board certified dermatologist in New York, mm -hmm. she said that obviously we know that caffeine is a diuretic, so it dehydrates you and that makes your skin all like puffy and quote lackluster. Mm. So really, I mean, it just makes it like dull because oh, you're wow. not drinking enough water. But that, that being said, if you do like supplement and drink a ton of water, yeah. it's not like it's, you know, 
depleting your collagen stores or anything like that. It's just because you're dehydrated. So mm-hmm. it's that a makes fixable to an extent pro- problem. It's not the end of the world. JLo wasn't just yeah. blowing hot air. Okay, so what's the verdict? I would recommend cold turkey. Yes, it's painful the first couple of days, but then it gets extraordinarily better. And this time around, I just felt groggy all the time. Yeah, I also actually did read a study that said you should do gradual decrease for six weeks, mm. which is like a long time commitment, but you know, you do, do what yeah. you gotta do. I think I did like a half, like a cold turkey slash yeah. gradual, which was, yeah, you either have to do the full gradual or do the cold turkey. If you're very, very dependent on caffeine or if you have chronic headaches, like talk to your doctor, you know. True. Like it's, we are it's not a, doctors No, yet. yeah, definitely talk to your doctor if you have like, a, you know, conditions that could be affected by caffeine. Okay, so like what are you gonna do going forward now that we're here. Now that I have arrived back at caffeine, I am going to drink like one to two cups a day, but try to keep it at one. And I also um, read the study where researchers found the optimal time to drink your one cup a day is at 11 o'clock. So I think I'm gonna like follow science and just drink one cup at 11 o'clock. I love that. Yeah. I love getting up and like, Grinding my beans, and yeah. I recently got a pour oh, over wow. thing. Yeah, you go all it's out. It's a fun activity. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Cheers to new beginnings. Yes, to new beginnings. With a healthier relationship with coffee. Agreed. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks so much for watching. For more episodes of Test Dummy, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, drop your ideas for future episodes in the comment section, whether that's some trend or product or just some torture you want to put me through. Okay, see you soon. Bye.